five, four, three, two, one. Engines full power. And lift off of CRS 27. Go Falcon, go Dragon. Falcon 9 soars off the launch pad. Dragon now on its way to the International Space Station with important new science experiments and crew supplies. Stage one, chamber pressure is nominal. At T plus 40 seconds, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from historic launch Power complex 39A in Florida. We're now coming up on our max Q in about uh, 20 seconds or so, which is the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure the vehicle will go through during its flight. Sonic. Max Q. And there's that call out for max Q. Coming up next are five events back to back. First is main engine cutoff, or MECO, which is when all nine of the Merlin 1D engines on the first stage will shut down. After those nine engines shut down, the first and second stages will separate, uh, also called o out over the nets as stage and separation. Then the first stage will flip. Then the first stage will flip around to make its way back to its landing site. The drone ship named a shortfall of gravitas. The second stage will then ignite its Merlin vacuum engine to boost Dragon to low Earth orbit during SES-1. And the last event is the boost back burn to reduce velocity of the first stage in preparation for atmospheric entry. And this whole sequence will take place over about 30 seconds or so. Now we should be hearing that call out for main engine cutoff in about 20 seconds from now. Wonderful tracking shot of our rocket. Nico. Stage separation confirmed. In back ignition. Stage one, boost back startup. And there's all of those callouts for those milestones. So we had Miko stage separation, a stage one flip, second engine start one, and the start of the partial boost back burn. While a boost back burn is normally performed in order to return the first stage to one of our landing zones, here we are just performing a partial boost back. This shortened burn, possible due to payload weight, will allow us to recover the Falcon 9 booster much closer to the coast and shorten the drone ship's journey back to shore by about one and a half to two days. Stage one, boost back, shut down. And there's confirmation of boost back shutdown. If you're just tuning in, you're watching a live webcast for the 27th commercial resupply mission to the International Space Station for NASA. This is SpaceX's 17th mission for 2023 and the second Dragon flight to the International Space Station this year. We lifted off from Kennedy Space Center's historic launch complex 39A just about three minutes and 45 seconds ago. On the left side of your screen is the Falcon 9 first stage that is making its way back to Earth. And on the right side is the second stage. The second stage, and you can see that MVAC engine there. As a reminder, today's mission marks the seventh flight for this Falcon 9 booster, which previously supported the Amazonas Nexus mission, SES-22, iSpace's Hakuto r Mission 1, and three Starlink missions. Now, in order to make its way back to our drone ship, a shortfall of gravitas, it has two more burns to execute. The first is the entry burn, where three of the Merlin engines, engines one, five, and nine, will reignite. This helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn is the landing burn, and this is a single engine burn, engine nine, that brings the vehicle's speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship. Now, occasionally on your screen, um, w when the booster is in uh, is visible, you may see some nitrogen gas bursts, and these are used for attitude control as the booster makes its way back to the drone ship. Falcon 9 is also equipped with four hypersonic grid fins positioned near the top of the first stage. And once in the atmosphere, stage one is only using the grid fins for steering as it makes its return to Earth. And the, these titanium grid fins will orient the rocket during re-entry and guide the rocket during descent. And there's that call out for nominal trajectories. 
on the left side of your screen, you can just make out some civilization of Earth on Earth. In just about eight seconds from now, we should see that first stage entry burn begin. Stage one of TS is safe. As mentioned previously, today's recovery operations are being managed by an all-female recovery team, and this is a really cool moment for the industry and Stage SpaceX. Two of TS is safe. There's that call out that stage two FTS is saved. And we should have second stage engine cutoff here shortly. Seco. There's that call out of Seco. Nominal orbit insertion. Right stage now on the right side of your screen, startup. you can currently see that currently see stage two, and there's confirmation of first stage entry burn startup, and probably saw it as well. Again, this is the first of two burns that the booster performs before landing on the drone ship. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. Now, as we get closer to the first stage landing, it's good to note that the Falcon 9 first stage is equipped with four landing legs made of state-of-the-art carbon fiber with aluminum honeycomb, and these are placed symmetrically around the base of the rocket and deployed just prior to landing. If successful, this landing will mark the 178th time that we've recovered a first stage booster, including both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions. And we're about 15 seconds or so away from landing. And the vehicle is traveling about 1,600 kilometers per hour. And this really puts uh, into perspective the deceleration of the rocket. In the span of less than a minute, we'll have reduced- Stage one, landing burn. And there's the start of that uh, first stage landing burn on the left side of your screen. Stage one, landing leg deploy. And there you saw the Falcon 9 first stage successfully stage land, and you can probably confirmed. hear the cheering behind me. The Falcon 9 first stage that supported today's mission landed for the seventh time, having previously supported Amazonas Nexus, SES-22, iSpace's Hakuto R Mission 1, and three Starlink missions. Today's landing also marks the 178th successful landing for an orbital class rocket. We are coming up on the last major task for stage two, commanding separation of Dragon a couple minutes from now. We expect to have video of Dragon separation from the top of the second stage, which looks into the trunk CRS-27 will be joining the Crew-6 vehicle, currently on orbit, so we'll be back to having two Dragon spacecraft docked at the International Space Station. And if you're just joining us, you're watching... <laughs> you're watching a live view of Dragon successfully disconnecting from the second stage, uh, heading to the International Space Station. This is the 27th commercial resupply mission to the International Space Station for NASA. And there you can see Dragon slowly drifting away from the second stage. As for cargo, today we will be delivering more than 6,000 pounds of science, research, crew supplies, and vehicle hardware to the Orbital Laboratory and its crew. To date, SpaceX has sent and brought back over 270,000 pounds of crew and cargo to and from the space station. The next milestone coming up is the nose cone opening sequence, which protects the uh, docking ring and navigation sensors. As a reminder, this is the third flight for this Dragon capsule, having previously supported CRS-22 in June of 2021 and CRS-24 in December of 2021. We lifted off about 12 minutes and 23 seconds ago from Kennedy Space Center uh, at Historic Launch Complex 39A. And that's going to do it for me here in Hawthorne, so I'm going to throw it back over to Dan in Houston.